trying to do is work from the north and west side of the building to kind of work around and get up on this floor. So you'll start seeing all that duct work and piping and everything like that start to progress up here probably in the next three or four weeks. So right now what they're doing is just putting this great uh, probably bioproofing on all the leaves and the columns. You'll see a little bit as we go further to the west and start to put some foam insulation on the perimeter walls and that's kind of the stage that we're at. Is this? this is our research pavilion, which will be local history and genealogy special collections. It's right in the middle of the building. We have a considerably larger. Oh, we have now. We're really excited about it. Yeah, great quality. Right. Second floor is views. There's just incredible views as we come over here. And we can start walking this way, but you will walk out onto a, it's a patio that's outside. That'll have Paris. a great deal of terrace, yeah. Watch their heels and high heel shoes. Just this line right here. That that'll be a skylight. There'll be a skylight on the roof, bring the natural light in, and it'll come down through this opening that's in the floor under that bisqueen. That'll all be surrounded by uh, glass handrail. So it's really cool. So this feature. is kind of the entryway in the second floor. Everything to this side is that special collections area. So comes clear, clear up to here. We use kind of a glass wall system to separate the areas, but to keep the open feel of the building. We can walk up here. This is the terrace that we were talking about. And what we'll do is it's a raised pedestal system. So there'll be uh, pedestals and there'll be pavers on top of that that will flush up to this floor. So you'll walk out that galvanized beam there that goes around here. There'll be a glass handrail on that. So uh, you can walk out in that area and enjoy the outside while you read your book. <laughs> so, that is an awesome yeah. area, isn't it? It's crazy. So an outdoor reading area that will be open when the library is open, but it's also a space that groups can rent outside the hours of the library itself. We think it will be very popular. So is there another access point then, other than through here? Or? No, because it's a secured space, this corridor in the middle actually can be separated from the rest of the library itself. So this is how That's people how come up and out. Up, yeah. You'll come up the main uh, stairway, which is over here, and get out here. This area is open as well. There's some glass handrail around it. Yeah. So that's a main collection down there. Main collection downstairs. This area is important because one of the things, as we talked to people, that they really wanted us to carry over into the new building was that feeling of the natural light that we have in the current building. So these elements help us do that. It becomes on the first floor also a natural wayfinding back into other parts of the building. From this area over to the wall is our learning pavilion. This is all of our nonfiction collections. It's the more traditional information reference room of the library with a series of small collaboration rooms right over along the windows of the panel. How are the collaboration rooms? How are they set up? How are they equipped? They are four to six person rooms, full technology, so people can come in, they can bring their own laptop, tablet, they can push them in to monitors on the wall, they can then be doing individual work or they can be doing group activities. Some of those will be first come first serve, some will be reserved.
this is all this is all glass curtain wall. This is this is awesome. Right here you see the keeper over there. The four C P. Great view. This will be a, a reading study area right up against the windows. A variety of really comfortable seating, so tables with the ability to plug in laptops. I believe there's one more. There's there if you look you can see the elevator shafts that are uh, laid up in the oh, basement. So that'll be the height. And, and unfortunately there's probably gonna be a brick field on top of that. So and this is here. down here in the kind of functional part of the building. Right. This is again the staff side. In our current building, when we receive new materials that come into the basement that we transported to the third floor, they work their way down back and forth. In this building, we receive back in this area. It comes right through, it gets checked in, it moves to our staff and processes it, and it goes right out on the floor. If things are returned here, they go out to the branches it just works back. So it's a very efficient process where we actually work with a lean business process expert to make sure that we create as much efficiency as possible. Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is uh, it's a storage space and it's the high density shelving that goes here on the first floor. A couple unique things to this building, things that we have in place at our Alfred Ranch and the Crown Highly Successful. One is a drive up of return, so people can just come up, they can do that. And then over in the corner is a service window. So if people have something that they want to come pick it up, they don't necessarily have to come in the building to do that. They can come to the window and we'll check it out and hand it to them right after. My prescription. Your prescription. Right. Yeah. System. It's called an automated materials handling system, which will use computer technology to check the material that's been returned and to do a first sort of that so we know where it goes either in this building or out to our branches. This is the area that's open. This is the area that could be open. Right there's a gating system that can do that. So looking down this direction, this is our community pavilion complex with the corridor. Space, we still have the, the sand up here is the meeting room. Okay. Storm, storm so, and also, right, also, also serves as a storm shelter. Uh, the space where we hope to have uh, a vendor come in and do coffee shop. And there's catering kitchen, other things that serve this part of the building. By the end of the next month. Yes, absolutely rentable. And because of the way the building is designed earlier or later, after use this section, the corridor, up the stairs and the elevator, and two tiers. By the end of next week, we should have all the free cast up uh, on the whole entire building. So. The second space for in ahead of us is the Friends of the Library Bookstore. Again, that can be accessible to and accessible hours as well. Restrooms. They have under that skylight when you look down on that second floor when you walk out. There'll be glass uh, partitions, pull up partitions. Right, that's how we put it up. This is an area, we call it our innovation center. It's a great flex space. We can bring in technology, we can do classes, we can bring in touring exhibits, we can um, do all kinds of other activities. If we have a lot of groups that will be coming, we might choose to use it as a welcoming introduction center as then we bring people into the rest of the building. Our streetscape pavilion, this is where we bring our fiction collections, our music and our film, things that are high interest, popular collections, put them on the first floor, all the way back through to, again, windows, great opportunities to sit in a relaxed environment, magazines, newspapers, those sorts of things up here. It is open. Where you're seeing the collaboration room. 
here on the first floor. There are um, three of those, plus the fourth area, which we will set aside to do video and music editing. Everything you see up there, those will all be beams with uh, sheetrock beams that you see that are framed in, and they'll have lights that shine off of them. Where you really cool looking stuff. Painted. Painted. Silly decks really need it. Special one, they call it an acoustical deck. So if you look at up, you can see that it's got a bunch of perforated holes in it. That absorbs the sound, and inside that, there's insulation. That way, you can leave that all exposed without having an echo or reverberate. Just north of these corners, there's a teen pavilion. It's a, a space unlike anything we have in our library system right now. So we will have a great mix of technology collections, um, great seating in a variety of ways for middle and high school students. Those seating, they open right into the collaboration study room. And then as we come closer to the entrance, this is a space that we refer to as our digital pavilion. We'll anchor most of our public computing services from here. A lot of places where people can come in if they just want to be accessing our Wi-Fi, they can be doing that. We'll have, I believe right in this area, a uh, computer training center where we'll do our structured classes. And then in the rest of the space, we have a very popular program called Book a Librarian, which is one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and that happens out of this space. program rooms on the side, and then as we go back around, there's a learning garden area over on the end that we hope to create that then expands that learning opportunity. We'll have shelves and um, computers, activity stations, different variety of learning. As you can see, the building is very flexible, a lot of open space, so over time we'll be able to move things around. We have great infrastructure to increase, it's very flexible, so we'll be able to move the shelves, the tables, and chairs, and people will still be able to get on. It off. There's a lot of glass curtain walls, so you can glass partitions. So you, you shut it off, it still looks really good. Cool. So you still get that. Yeah. 